What's up everybody? How's it going peeps? I'm gonna do this video about dirty cops. I'm gonna try to make it brief because there's unlimited amounts of complaints about the cops out there and there's been enough police bashing and people claiming they hate the cops so I should start with a disclaimer. I do not hate police. In fact, I've been screwed over by cops in the past. I've been pulled over for profiling because I drove a, a bus or I was a hippie or whatnot or harassed in this place or that place. But when I really looked at it in, a, in you know, from an honest perspective, I've probably been left alone and let go more than I've been harassed. And it's not because, uh, it's mostly because I know how to talk. I'm respectful to police just as I would expect them to be respectful to me. So, but honestly, I've been in trouble. I was, you know, we were pulled over. I've, I've, I've been on probation for mushrooms and for cannabis twice, and uh, you know I've I've built up a re I built up over the years a resentment towards police for the way that they handled my cases and others around me. But I'm still, you know, of the awareness that uh, police have a difficult job. You now I know it's not the hardest job, and I know that a lot of them take it too far. And I'm definitely not here in support of police, but I just wanted to say that I'm not here opposing police. I've learned over my years that police are an essential part of society, that there are plenty of people that it's not that the cops just put themselves in this position, it's that we asked for defenders, protectors, you know, samurais who would protect their town, whatever, in every different culture they have, you know, we decided as a whole, we can't protect all our own homes every single minute, so why not hire a sentinel, somebody to watch over our stuff? And in practice, this works great. You know, even up in the early part of the century, I'm not going to say that cops used to be great and now they suck, because that's just ignorant. You know, there were plenty of police beatings and, and profiling and it, it, all through the, you know, since the founding of the country, since, since all through time memoriam, through history, right? So, but we tend to focus on the negative and the ones that are breaking the law rather than uh, the plenty of police who help people and do a great job and follow up with their oath that they took. But, you know, I've been watching this show on and off for the last couple of weeks. Uh, Rob Wolchek, it's a Channel 5. They're on YouTube. They're just clips, but it's uh, the Hall of Shame. And it's like an early 2000s show where he goes and he tries to expose... This is back when journalism still existed. And it's just shameful because it was so good, you know, these guys actually, the guy would go out and investigate, look at the paperwork for people who are claiming to be contractors that are ripping people off, and people complain to the news, and the news goes out and investigates. Well, they did this one investigation into policing for profit, and it went on for quite a while, and eventually they even got harassed by the cops, because they said that the news was harassing the chief, or the sheriff. Um, so here we have journalists who are asking the chief of police, why do you have a bulldozer that was paid for by public funds, you know, in your driveway, and nobody would answer questions. And, and, and here I am thinking, all the cops sticking together and defending each other, what's happened is police aren't forced to walk the beat and know their neighbors anymore in most locations. And so they spend more time with their fellow officers than they do with the society that they're supposed to be protecting. They're in their cars, they're separate from everyone else, and they can suspect whoever they choose. It's easy to get trapped in kind of a paranoia state, and then the police start to think that everyone's out to get them, when in reality, I know most people I know are afraid of the cops in one way or another. If they see a cop, they don't think, thank God there's a cop around. I feel safer around my own fellow man than I do if I see police. I think I'm gonna be harassed, because it's hard to break that, but, um, this is because of what I, you know, what's happened to me in the past with my friends and I and people I know, as well as what I've seen. In this particular case, uh, this case started as a policing for profit, um, uh, you know, news story, but it was in Tennessee where these police, really this video was, you know, originally intended to be about civil forfeiture, which is one of the biggest issues that we're facing with cops right now. and. Uh, I think it has to be stopped. It should be completely eliminated. Civil forfeiture basically says if a cop pulls you over and, uh, you know, do you have any drugs in the car? No. Do you have any money in the car? And you tell him, oh, yeah, I've got, you know, $5,000. I'm going to buy a car right now. And the cop says, you know, I think this is drug money. I'm going to confiscate it. And you might think, well, you know, they can't do that. But they do. 
and they have, and there were several cases of people who were pulled over on the, on the highway because civil forfeiture or in, in Tennessee traveling on this particular highway where drugs are known to run through, right? Well, the problem is that they were monitoring the southbound lanes, not the northbound. Northbound are where the drugs come in, the southbound, south and eastbound, or westbound are where the drugs were going, or the money was going back. They don't want the drugs, they want the money. So this means they're allowing the drugs to come in just so they can confiscate the money. And why? Because when many police forces confiscate money, they can uh, use a percentage of that as given back to them, sometimes all of it, to use for their own police force. So they can buy new guns, new armored personnel carriers, you know, uh, you know more gadgets and more things. Um, I believe that the police should be properly, you know, properly armed and have what they need, but, uh, but never should someone take somebody else's money on suspicion. And here's the thing, it's innocent until proven guilty is complete bullshit in that case. You know, uh, this case went on for a long time, and this is just one news article that covered this one situation. But there were dozens of people, you know, that said that they'd have their money taken, confiscated, that the cops were specifically just looking for money, and some of them never got it back. Some of them it took, you know, a year or two to get back. Um, people get pulled over and uh, have their cars confiscated. You know, somebody borrowed his, I think his mom's car or something, that, he had a joint or whatever it was and, and he gets pulled over and they confiscate the parents car but they keep it you know for like over a year and you, here you're, you're taking away somebody's livelihood their ability to get to work and to pay their bills and then they're still making payments on the car um, what it comes down to is if you pull somebody over and they're obviously not a drug runner you know the only excuse you have to take their money is that you're robbing them and you're robbing a citizen of your own country and shame on those cops those are the dirtiest most crooked corrupt cops one of the shows I watched earlier, they were talking about uh, an issue that happened years back where 14 different police were indicted for purging, you know, perjury for, uh, they were basically selling cocaine. So this one guy had a kilo of coke that he confiscated from a drug dealer and decided to sell it off on the side to pay for, you know, to, to make the money. But, uh, you know, it's bad enough if a cop skims a little bit off of a drug dealer's pile. You know, it, I can see that being hard to resist for a lot of people. And when you're in there with a, a group of cops and you've got a million dollars, you know, in stacks of hundreds, that'd be really hard to resist, knowing that it's all going to go into evidence and probably go back, you know. I, I can't say I would, you know, hate a cop for doing something like that, even though it's completely against what I think to be, you know, right. But if you are confiscating drugs and then putting them back into your own community, you're a shithead. You're a piece of shit. You know, that's like the worst thing I can imagine. You know, these are the police that are hired to protect us. And the thing that we forget is that the cops don't just have a job. They are public servants. This is something that people forget so often that the same with the judges, the president, everybody in Congress, they are all put there because we don't want to do the paperwork. Just like with the cops, you know, we can't protect ourselves all the time, right? Well, we can, but you know what I'm saying. It, the idea and the premise of it makes sense, but the amount of police that, you know, basically with the society that we have now, uh, it's we could self-police a lot more efficiently, I think. But there are still some cases, it's like, uh, here's the argument, you know, somebody said, what if something happened like in Vegas? You know, uh, let's say the poli people police themselves. So what do you do when there's an, an active shooter up in a hotel building? How do you organize your own, you know, civil groups together and make sure that everyone's there and calling up, oh yeah, we need, you know, need the civil defense over here and uh, who's our sniper and, you know, it makes sense to have an organized group of people that do this, but I really think that, am I here with the answers? Probably not, but I should give at least a couple because plenty of people complain about the world and things in it, um, but seldom give any actual answers as to what we're going to do about it. And that's why I walked away from the conspiracy world and all of that. It's just, look, everything's wrong with the world. We're all fucked, you know? No. I think that we can fix this by, at least in our com own communities, by demanding that police at least, say one day a week, they walk the local beat in their area. You know, if they have that type of a town. It's obvious some areas are just too large, you know? some uh, there's There's too many roads and not enough you know, little business areas to actually walk, but I think at the very least, you know, being honest is a crucial aspect of being a human. If you're willing to stand up for your fellow cops, 
and willingly lie about the citizens that you are hired by us to protect, then, I mean, there's, I feel that that just is probably the worst thing that you can do. But on the other hand, I understand that uh, you don't want to speak against your own fellow cops. You know, you're turning in your own people. Even if you know they're guilty, then all of a sudden you're the enemy, and then you're going to lose your job. So what do we do about that? It's, it's hard. Um, people tend to stick together in groups and, you know, don't want to budge. So uh, I think that the police are out of control when it comes to uh, especially search and seizure. And what they're doing, you know, I, I won't even go into the stories of how they break into people's houses and get the wrong house. I mean, if you look at the stories of how many people were raided, you know, in just the last few years where the cops got the wrong house and busted the door down and arrested and scared the shit out of them at the very least or uh, shot and killed them you know I mean this happens a lot more than people realize is it the you know is it something that's a, a huge you know uh, <laughs> a huge problem everywhere no of course not but it happens and, and it happens because there's not enough adequate research done properly to make sure that you know the people that you're kicking the door in are actually the people you're looking for in a way. So uh, I would think with all the resources, you know, just doing a little more policing on that end, you know, could be very useful. You know, I, I was raided when I was younger from a cop that wasn't even from my town because he had something, some vendetta against me and my friends and because uh, we were pot smokers in the town. So I moved to another town and I remember when they busted me, the news article, I was in the newspaper and it said, uh, drug dealer ignores borders so now police do too. And uh, God, I looked for that, that article, but I don't even remember when it was, but I thought about that. I was like, you're admitting that you're ignoring borders. The, the police are just admitting in that headline that, yeah, well, you know, we're gonna, because the guy was from a different town, so what he did was somehow got somebody from my county to come, you know, help him out. Anyhow, they raided me and all I had was some little pot plants under fluorescent lights. I just turned them onto the budding cycle that morning and they were my first plants. They were only this tall and there was like eight of them in this crappy little crawl space. So they were probably surprised to find that they didn't get much, but the attitude with which they raided me and the things they took, you know, really set the stage for, you know, me wondering what are these guys doing? What kind of cops are these who, they're taking my art, they took my drawings, my sketches, my comic books that I've worked on, and my pot leaf poster. I mean, it was just a big fuck you and in the end when I got back when I got out of jail came back and the only thing that they had left was a film container full of pot seeds that was in my drawer they pulled it out and set it on the top of the dresser I mean if that isn't a fuck you try it again I mean I don't know what is so you know professionalism that's what we're after if I did something wrong then you know bust me take what relates to that but they don't do that you know they want to confiscate everything you have and it's just, uh, it's disgusting. So that's how I feel about, you know, about this, this, this issue. It's uh, specifically relating to seizing people's property. And uh, so be aware of that. At the very least to take away from this, if you're driving with a lot of money, never tell a cop you have it. Don't, don't ever tell a cop that you have money, any amount of money. It's like a cop should never even fucking ask you that. You know, it's 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 a trap. So, uh, not that most people drive around with that much, but you know, there were a case where one guy was had say had his life savings. He'd saved up. You know, he was like 20 or 19. He was leaving from college and he was driving out to the West Coast to go try to get a, an apartment and to stay with his mom for a while. He'd saved up like 10,000. And the cop pulled him over, asked him if he had it. He's like, Oh, just my money. I'm taking to California. They seized it and said it's for drugs and basically they just send you on your way and say tough shit you can come back and you have to come back to the state to get your money so Tennessee is one one messed up place you know I, I hear so many stories out of there I've only been there once but uh, yeah I didn't really like it when I was there it's got some beautiful places but just not the beautiful people situations I don't mean that offensively to any people I know people from Tennessee that are good people it's not like uh, yeah, my my sister-in-law lives there, and uh, yeah, it's the same everywhere. It's just it's just crazy that entire police forces can be in on these things, and it's kind of sickening. So I've rambled too long about cops. I'll talk to y'all later, and have a wonderful day.